we got in about 80 something plays, I think 80, 80 plus plays, which is great. You know, chance to do that and, uh, you know, get some live situations. Obviously, the quarterbacks weren't live, but it's great to see the competition. There's a lot of good. I told them after practice, there's a lot of good on both sides. And uh, as a coach, you try to create this, this you know, build up to the outcome of this game. Um, you know, and making the, the winners, the, the winning side getting the blue jerseys. But at the end of the day, it's the ability to get them to focus on what it takes to get the blue jerseys and to um, get their job done on that play. And so saw a lot of good things. You know, defense won. Um, you know, and, and I told them at the end of practice, came down to two pick sixes. Like, I've been in a lot of jersey scrimmages as a player and a coach. And if you have one, but for sure two pick sixes, it's a, a great chance as a defense you're going to win. And so that hasn't happened in the past. This is the first time since I've been here. I've been head coach uh, that the defense has won the jersey scrimmage. So um, it was good to see um, just the competition, the competitive spirit on both sides, and some guys step up and make some plays. So uh, with that, I'll open up for questions. OK, right down the middle on your left. Go ahead. Me? Allison, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I know Riley's not able to fully practice with you guys right now, but you could see him right next to you and kind of running through the motions. How beneficial is it for him to be able to still be sort of active and, and be out there and learning with you guys? Yeah, that's that's just a reflection of who he is. He This was his idea. And uh, he wanted to get – he was going to challenge himself to, to have 100% focus on every rep so he had the headset on he knew every call that was going in and he went and stepped through every single one and so that's who he's been um he's actually practicing a little bit more now doing some seven on seven some other things and so but today we didn't want to let him go um and so for him to get work like that it, it just is a reflection of who he is that's going to make him better and that was my challenge as a head coach to him is that hey what can you do although you're physically not practicing on saturday what can you to get do to get better and uh he showed today a chance to do that all right, third row on your right, Tim O'Malley. Coach, solid day. It seemed from the defensive edges, the defensive ends, getting some pressure on the QBs. Is it is it difficult for you and your staff to grade when you're rotating quarterbacks, twos versus threes, one versus twos, how they – the communication between the quarterback and the edges in trying to call pass protections? No, I don't I don't think it's hard to gauge. It's, it's you know, is there – are you doing your job or not, right? Like, um, the biggest thing I, I try to challenge the quarterbacks with is that you can't get comfortable in the red jerseys, right? And, and you're, you've been used for 11 practices. This is practice 11, but for 10 practices of not being touched, um, I'm going to try to call sacks when I think it's truly a sack. I mean, I know it's never perfect, right? And um, But I did feel some edge pressure. I don't know if they would have been sacks. I would think the quarterback steps up and get the, balls out of, get the ball out of his hands. But that's the, you know, the double-edged swords. Do you, do you live them up? Or do you, you know, keep them red? And, and I want to keep them protected and uh, uh, make sure that we're keeping our quarterbacks healthy. But I did feel some pressure. But a lot of times, man, as you really look at the, the if you can get those defensive guys, as an offensive mindset, get those defensive guys to run behind the quarterback, that quarterback's going to step up and deliver the ball. So um, it'll be interesting as we go back and look at the film. But I, it doesn't matter who's at quarterback as much as, hey, do the tackles, whoever's in there, execute and do their job. Is the quarterback able to step up and get rid of the ball? All right, second row on your left, Tyler James. Marcus, Jaden Harrison has been out with a boot. What is his injury status? He had a, a plantar fasciitis um, strain, and so uh, he'll probably be out for the end of the spring. We just need to rest it and let it recover, um, you know, similar to the J.D. Bertrand injury that he had in the senior bowl. Um, he'll be back. He'll be back. We just want to keep it protected, let it heal right now. And then Jaden Thomas has been held out a little bit. What's he been dealing with? Hamstring. Okay. Hamstring. Thank you. All right, first row, far right, Eric Hansen. Hey, Coach. The offensive line, what were you hoping to see this spring out of them, and, and how would you gauge your expectations or your hopes for them? Yeah, as we've always said, we're O-line, D-line driven program. So what do you want to see? I want to see them be able to run the ball, be able to protect the quarterback, and execute their job at a high level. You know, there's a couple competitions, right? you got a, ta a competition at right tackle. Um, you know, Rocco is, is, is trying to get back to being 100%. So at some point when he's 100%, you're going to have a competition with him and somewhere in the inside. And, and you know, Jack Asall has been pretty much the one at the left tackle. So you're trying to create competition, but understanding as, the, as, as an offensive line unit, you need that consistency in those five guys. So uh, I'm trying to get them both, but listen, I want to see them be able to run and pass the ball. There are some young guys that um, 
I wanted to ask you about that impressed me today. C.J. Carr, Micah Gilbert, and Bubakar Traore, can you comment on the springs that they've had? Um, C.J.'s been great. Um, you know, coming in the winter, mature, uh, really understands – Offensive concepts, but defensive football, smart guy, makes great decisions. And so I've been really pressed, impressed with him at quarterback. Mike has come in and, and, and really done a great job. Like he's performed at a high level. Um, you know, he's even getting some reps with the ones at times. Now we're, we have a couple injuries, but he's going uh, gonna to do some things for us this year. I really like uh, where he's at and where he's progressing to. And then Bubakar. Bubakar just got to keep telling us that he just keeps showing up. He just keeps, show, he keeps showing up. And, and, that isn't against just the threes, the two. It's, it's, he's showing up against the ones. And so that's what you want to see, right? And that depth, that competition, and those guys that can step up and make plays. But all three of those guys have done some really positive things along with some others. All right, down the middle, third row on your left, Fahit. Hey, Coach. Uh, a couple of years ago, Jack Kaiser burst onto the scene, got the game ball, uh, and, and kind of has taken off since then. What are you seeing leadership-wise from Jack uh, and how is he affecting some of that young linebacking core? Yeah, he's the uh, elder statesman, you know. Um, I was making fun of him in the pregame lines and how many practices or spring games have you been in this stadium? Like, he, he's been here a, a lot. But, you know, he made a decision to come back for a reason. Um, he wants to improve what he's doing specifically. Like, he wants to improve at his position and his traits and his skill set, but also – he wants to to make sure this team reaches his full potential. So he's been a unbelievable vocal um, leader by example, uh, just a great um, mentor for those young linebackers in terms of how to approach every day, how to work, how to go about your business. And so, so grateful to have him back um, for his, I think it's his sixth year, right? But just grateful to have him a part of this team. All right, first row on your right, Pete Sampson. Marcus, the younger linebackers, um, is there potential for, with their athleticism to let Al Golden maybe do some different things with pressures? I think we saw Kingston with a pressure. I mean, Jalen Seed was kind of all over the place. Does that maybe add a little variety to the playbook potentially just with their athleticism? Yeah, I think it's similar to what we how we utilized Maris last year, right, as being a backer on first and second down. And at the end of the day on third down, if it's a passing situation, you want to get your best four pass rushers on the field no matter – what position they are on first and second down. And so um, Kingston and Snead have both shown the ability to be able to rush the passer from the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, Jalen did it last year, um, but Kingston has shown the ability to do that. So is he one of the top four? That's to be determined. But he's had a heck of a spring. Um, he's done a really good job just from the moment he's gotten here to where he's at now. And uh, he's going he's gonna to help us this year. I was curious at what point during the spring or maybe – it was before spring started, you felt like C.J. Carr like, had sort of this, this competence of how to run the offense. Um, I realize it's you know, some with the threes today, but you know when there's pressure in his face and he throws back on a late read, I think it was to Poli, and, yeah. um, I mean, that's, that's hard for a freshman to do. Um, when did you sort of see that, okay, this, this may be happening here? I mean, I don't know if it was one specific day, but um, you saw the way he came in during bowl practice as a high school senior and just – just soaked it all in, right? And, and I guess you got to give credit to his high school and his development from dad and grandpa, right, that are, you know, pretty knowledgeable about this game of football. But he came in and he just soaked – he didn't say much. He just soaked it in. He was a sponge. And now as you see him through spring, he's progressing and getting better. And every time I walk by Coach Caduli's office, he's in there. And that's, that's how you improve, right, is that can you retain the information that your coaches are trying to give you so you can go out and do it when it matters the most. And, and – for different people to retain that information, it takes different things. But that's what you see out of C.J. Carr and a lot of these young guys is that, okay, they're wanting to learn it. Like, how do I figure this thing out and process it? So now when I, it's out there in the stadium, I can go out there and perform. And so um, he's, he's really done a, a good job, really good job. All right, back to the middle on your left, Mike Berardino. Hey, Marcus. I uh, don't believe I saw Tyson Ford out there today or no. Tuesday. Any, can you clarify his status? He's taking some uh, personal time just to figure out what he wants to do, okay. you know, moving forward. Still with the program at this time? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in advance of the transfer portal, the spring annual uh, fun of the transfer portal, how, what, how can you guys be proactive? I know you said in the past you don't go around and ask everybody for a status update, but is that something where – 
you're trying to to get it. I'd say you won't be surprised by anything you might see in the next two it's, weeks. It's called having honest conversations with your players, and that's what we got to do, and that's what our, our job as coaches are, is to have honest conversations, have relationships with our players, so there are no surprises, and so that's what we do. We This isn't just a transfer portal discussion. This is a year-round, if you love your players and you want to see them reach their full potential, you're going to have honest conversations with them, and so I don't want it to change because there's a transfer portal window coming open, right? That's just what we should do if we're mentors and leaders to young people. We should have a relationship with them, and we should be honest with them, and they should be honest with us. So then when they make a decision, hey, I want to stay, I want to transfer, like it's not a surprise. But that comes from having a relationship with them, which takes time, and it takes investing in those young people. Staying right in the middle there, coach on the right, Chuck Freebie. Last time we chatted, I asked you where you needed to see improvement from your team. You said you needed some time to think about it. So since you've had nothing else to do, uh, where do you need to see improvement from this team with a, a week to go in the spring? It's all over. Um, it's never a finished product. What you're trying to do is build this group of coaches and talented individuals to make sure when we play game one, we're ready to perform, right? So we have to be more consistent on both sides of the ball at doing our jobs, at, at making plays on offense, making plays on defense. Our special teams has to get improved. Like, there's not just one area where we need to improve. We need to improve in everything. There's everything, right? But that's the mindset of this program, right? We're not satisfied. You're never satisfied. You're building this group so that when you play these 12 guaranteed opportunities, you are performing at maximum capacity. And uh, in order to do that, you've got to have a, a never satisfied mindset. And I think that's what everybody in this program has to have. And then in terms of the running back room, uh, today they did a great job, I thought, on blitz pickup in the passing situations. I know Coach McCullough would be pleased with that. In terms of the rotation, how do you see that sorting itself out? You have so much talent back there. Even Fisher today had some nice short yardage runs with the threes. Yeah, you know, just I don't know what the clear rotation is going to be as we go into College Station, but we don't need it. <laughs> an answer to that right now. We got some talented dudes in that room, and we got to find ways to get them the ball. And uh, but to, in order to prove to us that you're going to get the ball, you got to continuously be trusted to do your job. And so I love what I've seen, as in terms of protection, as you brought up, in terms of executing. Um, it, but it's a long way to get in the, to the college station. We'll get to that point, and we'll talk about reps and how we get them the ball. But for sure, we're, we, we have discussions. Of how do we get all these playmakers on offense the ball? we got to find different ways to do that. All right, first draw on your left, Jack Sol. Hey, Marcus, uh, back to the subject of those you know, younger linebackers. It seems like Jalen Snead has kind of taken a leap this spring in terms of becoming like a complete player. What have you seen, seen out of him? Yeah, commitment, right, commitment to it. Um, He's always been a talented football player, um, but that, that's a word that, you know, it, it can, could mean unfulfilled potential at times. And so he is committed to it. He's showing up every day, really being obsessed with how do, you get, how do I get better, meeting with Coach Bulla. Um, I've been really pleased with where, how he's performed consistently through 10 practices. I think as you look at the last two years, you know, Snead's a guy that would show up, he would flash and go, man, he's a freak. How do, now he's consistently doing his job, which is more important than anything. And then it looked like uh, Jaden Osbury kind of getting some reps at, at that, not, not just rover, but at that nickel position. Uh, where do you see him in terms of positional flexibility going forward? Yeah, he's a guy that we've said, man, he's just done such a good job at what we've asked him to do. we got to put him at different places to see how we can get him on the field. And that's a compliment to him and what he's done. Um, it was really probably over the last two or three practices we said, okay, let's try Jaden Osbury at a couple different positions because we're not going to be able to keep him off the field. He's a talented individual, you know, and so that's what spring's about, right, is being able to move your pieces around and, and saying, okay, how do we make the pieces, um, how do we formulate the scheme around the pieces, right? It's not the, the vice versa. It's not, hey, here's our scheme. This person has to fit into it. It's, okay, let's get the best players on the field and formulate the best defense around those pieces, and uh, Osbury is doing a, a great job. All right, to your right, third row, Tim Priester. Coach, as, as we have talked to the offensive players this spring, they talk about how Al Golden's defense challenges them with a, a bunch of different looks. Do you, has the defense been ahead most of the spring just because 
the veteran nature of the defensive side, third year with him, and then the new offensive coordinator on offense? Yeah, year three, right? It's the same thing I said to you guys last year. After year two, it's, you know, when you go into year three now with pretty much between Gold and Mickens, um, Al Washington being consistent in terms of the, the voices in those rooms, year three of the same scheme. Like, it, it, it's, uh, it's an NFL pro-style defense. There's a lot of defense. And year one, we couldn't perform at the, at the pace, at the level that he wanted, right? And that's always a challenge. How do you get these athletes to play fastest? Like, that's the challenge of a coach. It's not to be so complicated that you're trying to confuse the opponents. Like, okay, how can I get these people to understand what I want and play fastest? Well, it's year three of the pretty much. Now, we, we have enhances, but pretty much of the same scheme with some, a lot of the veterans coming back. Whereas the offense, it's spring, it's practice 11 of a new scheme, right? And so they're going to be ahead. Right, defensively, because a lot of returning players, year three than the offense, but the offense has done some really good things. And what you'll you'll see from the offense side is that they're going to get every look imaginable. Right, they're not playing against a Marcus Freeman defense that you're going to see a couple of different things. You know, you're going to see everything with, with Al Golden, and and it's um, it's going to it's going to help them improve. Like. If they can understand that, which I know they do, the coaches do, like this is really good for you. What you're seeing defensively, this is really good for you. You're going, to, you're going against one of the best in the country, right? This is going to be one of the best defenses in the country. And um, that's what our offense is going against every day. But at the end of the day, that's going to make you better. Right? We talk about all the time, these bloody wounds. Like it's, this is going to make them better. You know, I know it might be frustrating today. You don't win the blue jerseys and, you know, man, there's sometimes that the defense presents some challenges, but at the end of the day, this is going to make our offense and team better. And in talking to Coach Denbrock, we were talking about the versatility of receivers who can play different spots. And the first player that he mentioned was, was Jaden Greathouse, uh, actually being able to play all three. Where, where have you seen his, his growth and his development this spring? Yeah, you know, I think his natural position coming into Notre Dame was probably a slot receiver. And out of necessity, out of really the, the confidence he built in our coaching staff last year, we had to put him outside and do some different things. Now, going into year two, he's built the capacity to be effective inside as a, a slot receiver or go outside. And so to have a guy that can do that, um, it's going to truly benefit us. All right, that's it for today. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks, guys.